Thanks a lot. I am here in Manoa at the National Weather Service Central Pacific Hurricane Center, standing with Eric Lau, meteorologist here. Let's go through some of the numbers that came out from the 2 p.m. update. And first of all, intensity. Now, when we got that intensity, 125 miles per hour, I'm like, finally, category three. But you looked at me like I'm crazy because uh, you said it's really not that much of a difference from the 130 mile per hour uh, winds category four. Tell me uh, what's going on with intensity and uh, why your reaction was that way. Right, so even though it was uh, decreased a little by five miles per hour, it is still a 125 mile per hour system. So. Um, you know, it still packs that triple threat of impacts that we could face across the state with heavy rainfall, flash flooding, uh, damaging winds, and, and high surf. So we really can't let our guard down at this point. Is there any way at this point to know if this indicates the downward trend, or we had a viewer who wrote uh, and asked whether it could re-intensify? Right, so the expectation is for... Uh, hurricane lane to continue towards that region of upper level shear which would help to to decrease the the intensity of the system over time over the next few days however we can't ever rule out that the system could could intensify so we do still expect a weakening trend but we can't ever rule out the uh, re-intensification you could never rule that out huh? right i mean and anything can happen i mean a uh, shear could just uh, potentially maybe be not as strong. That's where the uncertainty comes in because it really depends on how much shear is going to impact the system, how fast it impacts the system, and by how much it's going to impact the system. But because it did come down to 125, the assumption is that it is starting to enter shear. Right, so that's, that's the thinking right now. It's going to be continuing on to the west, uh, to the northwest, uh, moving into that region of shear, uh, helping to, to, de to uh, decrease the, the intensity of, of lane. But here's the thing, and you pointed it out, it also slowed down from 7 miles per hour forward motion to 6 miles per hour, which just prolongs it. Right, so it, it continues to move northwest, although still at a really slow rate. So, you know, that duration and that prolonged period of time where uh, the heavy rainfall and all that moisture over the the southern southeastern portions of the state I mean that all that moisture is just going to be really just focused in on, on the state um, it's going to bring that heavy the threat of heavy rainfall and potential flash flooding um, in many parts of the state and all that moisture interacting with the terrain it just enhances the showers and rainfall leading to life-threatening uh, flash flooding conditions and the 2 o'clock update also indicated the current um, position of Lane, and it was 120, 190 miles southwest of Kona. And we have uh, the tropical storm winds out from the center by 140 miles. But even that, you said it does not put co the Kona coast in the clear. Right, so we expect uh, Hurricane Lane to continue moving north. So depending on the distance between Kona and the center of the system, you know, we could still be within that radius of 140 miles of tropical storm force winds. So, you know, really can't let our guard down yet until Lane really, really is out of, the, out of our region. Um, I did have another viewer question, and that was, do you think that Lane will make landfall? I mean, we can't rule that out. Um, you know, we, we have the, we put out the cone of uncertainty because uh, lane can be anywhere within the cone within that five-day period, so it could either be right or to the left, but there's also some cases um, um, where it could be outside of the cone, so we can never rule that out. Um, this is what we look at statistically for about two-thirds of the time that, the, that, her, that a hurricane would be within the cone, so um, just statistically that's where we expect it to be, but we can't rule out that, that extra one-third where it could be outside the cone. So there's a 33% chance it could be outside. Definitely. There's always a possibility, and that's why we're closely monitoring the proximity of lane um, and, and that shear, how much it's going to weaken lane, how fast it's going to weaken lane, and that really, that really will dictate the track over the next 24 to 48 hours.
All right. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you probably by the 5 o'clock update, which will give a more detailed update on Hurricane Lane, and it will also provide an updated forecast track for Lane. So we'll be hoping that it'll turn west.